Listeners of the Real Stuff Podcast, welcome to another show. Today is our featured guest series, and today I have with me my co-host Courtney and our very special guest, Ms. Paula Erlock from the Wellness Experience Jamaica. That name sounds so powerful. Good morning, Paula. And welcome to the Real Stuff Podcast. Good morning, and thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, so Courtney, you want to take it from here? Uh, okay, uh, well, you know, since it's Paula's Courtney. show, uh, we'll just ask Paula to just tell, tell the people who we are. Right. Because I know maybe, you know, Yes. People don't know or hear about you. Right. But I know maybe you know, you know there's a sector that should know you. So right, right. Let's go okay. ahead. So my name is Paula Herlock and I'm here. And since in we before you before you start, before you start, yes. Paula. Uh since we have already planned more than one show, you know, you mm -hmm. don't have to skip all stuff that you think they might not be very important. Because of the time. No problem. So just take your time and give us everything. Excellent. No problem Thank at you. all. No problem. Thank you for that. So, yes, my name is Paula Herlock. I'm here in Jamaica. I live in Kingston, Jamaica, but I'm originally from Montego. So, Wellness Experience Jamaica came about mm. when, as a, I, I would say, as a pandemic response. I'm trained as a geologist, so I worked in the environment sector for many years. And so I don't have a medical background. I don't have a healing background per se. Everything I know now is what I've garnered over the years. And it wasn't necessarily when the pandemic started. I've always just been interested in, in health, in wellness, in natural healing modalities and how to optimize the mind, the brain, the consciousness, and the whole person. So that's something that I've always personally been interested in. So enter the pandemic in 2020, and all of that work that I'd been doing before, I was now well equipped to be able to navigate effortlessly the pandemic and all it brought because a lot of the pandemic was mental and emotional trauma of just being imprisoned in your own home and being fearful. So a lot of people were not just suffering from the pandemic, but from the whole effect of being stuck at home and being told that they can't go anywhere and they have to wear a mask and so on. Yeah. Now, Everybody knows that one of the other things that happened as a sidebar to the pandemic was an increase in the levels of anxiety and in the levels of depression. And, you know, a lot of people tend to want to say the pandemic was a bad thing. My personal opinion, I'm going to be just very honest about, I actually think it was a very good thing. Because what it did, it stopped the whole planet in its tracks. And everyone had to just go home and be with themselves. A lot of people, we don't realize how much the pandemic brought us back to our self, self our center, our core. Because mm -hmm. society, and the pace that it was moving at, made us constantly in fight and flight we were constantly moving we were constantly moving and not taking time to rest not taking time to check in with ourselves not taking time to care for ourselves not not taking time to truly you know connect with the divine um can we take a quick break, please? Can we stop the recording? Sure. Yes, go ahead. Okay. 
plane. Sorry guys, my son had an emergency. I'm so sorry. Can we resume now? Yes, go ahead. Yes, yeah, go ahead, yeah, man. Right, so we now had a chance to reconnect with ourselves because just the very nature of society and the pace of it was taking us away from ourselves. We were watching movies, we were going out all the time, we were shopping for clothes, we were putting in hair, we we're doing our eyes, we we're doing this, we we're wearing the latest. And so we were, we were not in touch with ourselves. A lot of people were losing themselves in alcohol, in drugs, in work, in competition, in relationships, right? So the pandemic basically brought us all back down to square one. And so that was a powerful thing to have happened. That's when we started to see the cracks in the, in the infrastructure that we would call our life. That's when we started to see that we were a nervous wreck. Some of us, some of us re realized that we had a lot of anxiety. Just so many things I think people began to realize during that pause. And I call it a pause. And pauses are very important because life is like that. We sleep, we wake, we sleep, we wake. Sleep is a pause. The night is a pause to daily activity. The in-breath is a pause and then it's followed by the out-breath. So the very pattern of life speaks to um, contract, relax, up, down, in, out. You understand? So what happened was that many people realized that they were stressed and did not now know how to alleviate that stress. In fact, they got worried that they were stressed. They got worried that they were having anxiety attacks. Then some people became very sad. They got worried that they were being sad. And there are lots and lots of remedies, natural healing remedies for depression, for sadness, for anxiety. And the one that we want to talk about today is the vagus nerve. Now, the vagus nerve is not something that the medical profession talks about very often. They know about it, they're aware of it, and they know that certain um, pharmaceutical drugs will stimulate and nourish it, but that's not their focus. Their focus mostly is on the organs or on the systems. So I, I find that the Eastern um, philosophies were more interested or more understanding of the function of the vagus nerve. So I'm just going to give you a brief synopsis of what the vagus nerve is. The vagus nerve originates in the brain stem. Um, it's a set of nerves that originate in the brain and come down through the neck and they branch off down the spine and they connect <laughs> to every single organ of the body. And there's a reason for that. They send signals from the brain to the organs, giving them instructions on what to do. And they also send um, messages and information from the organs to the brain so that the brain is able to regulate whatever equilibrium or disequilibrium is in the organ, the brain regulates. So it's a beautiful um, system of conversation between the, the brain, the nerves, and the organs. So the, the, the vagus nerve basically is in charge of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic um, um, system. The sympathetic system relies on or is all about the activities that your body does. The parasympathetic has to do with 
the things that your body does automatically. Am I right? Um, the heart beats. Who gives the instruction for the heart? The heart to beat. The, bre the body breathes. Who gives the instruction for that? So there is a whole set of instructions that are coming from the brain and those instructions are coming through the vagus nerve. So when the vagus nerve is not operating optimally, the organs are also in distress. The, the breathing is going to be shallow. The heart rate is going to be elevated. The digestion is going to be interrupted. And then you have all of the spin-offs in terms of not feeling well, feeling sluggish, not producing the right levels of hormones so you can't sleep, so you have insomnia, or too much, so you want to sleep all the time, so you're, you know, you're feeling depressed and lethargic. So, so many things spin off from that vagus nerve not functioning optimally. So one of the things we're going to talk about now is some of the things that you can do to stimulate your vagus nerve so that you have improved vagal tone so that you have all of the communication between the brain and the organ systems happening effectively. So I'm going to harken back to your grandmother days. And I don't know about you gentlemen, but I remember when I was growing up with my grandmother, if my grandmother was vexed about anything, she would just start to hum. And you knew that, boy, she vexed. And she'd be like, mm -hmm, humming her favorite theme or humming her favorite song that has some kind of meaning to a word. And everybody's, everybody's familiar with that. True or false, guys? True, sure, that's true. <laughs> you know, your grandmother sending you a message in the song, but she's humming it, and she's humming it loud. So you better get the message. Now, that humming is not a random act. Our forefathers seem to have understood that the vagus nerve can be stimulated or relaxed and nourished through the act of humming. If you think about what humming does, humming is a sound that we create, but our mouth is closed. And so the sound travels up our vocal cords and vibrates the top of our roof. Yeah? And it, that vibration also goes into our brain and it stimulates the vagus nerve, which runs down our spine. Our vocal cords are here. Our voice box is in this area, our lungs, all the organs get vibrated by that hum that we produce. And that, a simple thing like humming, is enough to relax your vagus nerve. Yeah? Another thing that a lot of people don't realize is that singing also relaxes the vagus nerve and that is why some people love to sing it makes them feel good and that is why sometimes when people go to church and they're part of the choir and they go to church on a sunday and they sing for two hours and they pray and they they're quiet when they leave they're so much more relaxed than that piece because their vagus nerve has been nourished by the singing by the humming by the vibration of sound that has just that they've just experienced in the church so even the act of listening to music also and by extension relaxes. yes all those bathroom singers ah <laughs> that's the real deal right there you know you know how some people yes, get yes. happy when they finish when they finish the show they feel relaxed and happy but i like yes, the fact that yes. you raised that 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 shower issue as well because another way of relaxing the vagus nerve is to take a cold shower. So if you yeah. check it out, half of the people in modern society are having hot showers. No wonder the whole world is filled with anxiety and depression. They're not giving mm -hmm. their body that opportunity to relax and soothe 
and nourish that vagus nerve. So the act of taking a cold shower, coupled with a little singing, will make you yes. one of the happiest <laughs> human beings on the planet, right? So everybody needs to bear that yes. in mind, yeah? Um, another thing that people may not realize, the act of just splashing cold water on the face yeah. will revitalize you and wake you up, but it also um, relaxes the vagus nerve. And so sometimes um, if people are you know, feeling lethargic or just stressed, just the act of just splashing cold water on the face will help revitalize and, 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 and so, um, just, a, just a quick question, Paula. Yes. So um, can this vagus nerve be overstimulated? Well, it is a self-regulated um, uh, nerve. Remember, it's not, it's not a standalone. It, it, it works with the brain, right? And the very nature of the vagus nerve is all about e keeping the body in equilibrium. So even if it's overstimulated, there is a mechanism to regulate. And so if it's overstimulated, it's going to send a message to the brain and the brain is automatically going to send messages back to produce whatever hormone is required to soothe or calm down the, the vagus nerve. Understood? Yes. Right? Um, sure. So, I have, a big, I have a big question. Certainly. I have a big question. I can answer. Because <laughs> we, have been run, we have been running a lot of programs on mental health. There are a lot of experts. Does mental health fit in here any, 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 any at all? It is entirely, it is entirely related. And the problem has been that the Western approach to, 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 to wellness or, 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 or illness has not taken into consideration the role of the vagus nerve. So they go into um, a whole set of things with um symptoms and indicators that yeah this is this disease and that is that disease and so they've spent or they placed a greater emphasis on identifying the disease or the imbalance rather than focusing on the root cause and assisting people to resolve the matter or the issue at the root cause so i I, if I were to describe the vagus nerve, I would describe the vagus nerve as the root of some of the mental illnesses and mental imbalances that we are now um, uh, witnessing or experiencing um, in the public domain. So that is a very relevant question that you've raised. Yeah, the vagus nerve, therefore, um, for example, sometimes when people are very, very, if, if, if the liver, for example, is very toxic, people's behavior will change. They're, they're going to fly off the handle very easily. They're going to be hot headed. They're going to be bad tempered. They snap for nothing. Yeah. So it is important that we are not just nourishing and toning the vagus nerve, but that we are also nourishing and detoxing the organs. Yeah? So the vagus nerve is so intelligent, even if it's overstimulated, as you asked, Courtney, it will self-regulate. But most of the toxins that the organs are carrying are, are brought in through food. The overuse of certain foods or the undernourishment of the body. 
So one of the things they'll always say to you that most diseases and imbalances are as a result of mineral and vitamin deficiencies. So it is important that we nourish ourselves properly, detox our organs regularly, exercise regularly as a way of maintaining our organ systems, that is the heart or cardiovascular, the lung or respiratory, the circulatory system, which is the blood, the lymphatic system, which is the lymph and the nodes and the that whole system there, the, um, the, the, the digestive system, which is the stomach, colon and so on, and the bladder and reproductive system. So we need to take care of that, yeah? We also need to be nourishing simultaneously our vagus nerve so that the whole system is working seamlessly together. So you can now imagine that you are toning and, and relaxing your vagus nerves, but your organs are toxic. The organs are, are, are constantly going to be sending signals back to the brain that, hey, something is wrong, something is wrong, and the vagus nerve is going to be trying to bring it back into equilibrium. So we have to do our part and take care of both the vagus nerve and the organ systems. What's involved? What's involved is eating a balanced diet. Try as best as possible to eliminate the junk, the processed foods, and try to go back to nature. This is hard because this, the, our society is now structured with convenience in mind. So if you need food, you go to the supermarket, you get stuff that is packaged, it's filled with preservatives so that it has a long shelf life so it can be shipped, shipped from wherever in the world. So you're, most of us are consuming foods that are months, even years old, but filled with preservatives <laughs> to preserve the color and the texture and the firmness. Uh, we're eating genetically modified food for the same reason preserve the color the texture and the freshness right so what we need to be doing is going getting back to basics start to operate like your grandmother and your great-grandmother take the time to prepare your food eat from the land eat from the ground eat from trees yeah and stop eating from tins stop eating from the frozen food <laughs> section stop eating from cardboard boxes sealed in vacuum sealed containers with plastic wrappers all over. If you eliminate those, you eliminate half of the problem in terms of organ toxicity. Right? Because so the think, body was not heading, designed. Huh? I think we are heading in a good direction now. Yes. Based on the the war in Ukraine. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because Again Fertilizer is now short. That's a beautiful thing. Hearing, <laughs> yes, and I'm hearing the Minister of Agriculture was so shocked saying that we have to go back to organic go, growing our foods and to use, you know, our natural fertilizers. I mean... That's a beautiful we, we, thing. <laughs> yeah, we, we have Sweet. never used fertilizer and where I am, we have never used it, and we have no intention right. of going in that direction. That but is if fantastic. we have a mass change mm -hmm. in Jamaica, then we will be very, very healthy people. I'm telling very, you, very and um, the only problem is that our farmers are programmed, have been programmed to believe that their crops will not grow without fertilizer. And in fact, they probably are right because the seeds that they've been given are genetically modified and need to be catalyzed by some of the fertilizers. So what I yes. also advise people to do is go back to country and find the old time papa tree them, find the old time tomatis plant them and try to get those seeds and grow from those seeds to feed yourself. 
Yeah. Wonderful. So, yes, definitely. So the, the war, the, the Ukraine war might be another blessing in disguise. Let us see. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Right. In fact, in fact, mm -hmm. on our show yesterday, Courtney. Yes. It was it, another spin off of the war with the shortest of, of wheat and grain and all that is that the, the Caribbean staple is cassava that can do, do everything that those things do, does. So we had some people on yesterday who was promoting, you know, the mass growing of cassava. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. You know, we Caribbean people are the luckiest people on the planet and we don't know. We have oh, yes, a beautiful know, yeah. climate. We have a certain amount of rainfall, rich soil. We did not need to be importing all of what we're importing. And so now we have a whole generation of people that are spoiled. If they see a tomato tree standing up in front of them, they'd be shocked to know that uh, oh, yes. tomato is grown a, a plant, yeah? And so it's very mm -hmm. unfortunate that we have lost so much of the traditional wisdom around growing, foods, uh, consuming, you know, naturally and consistently. In fact, um, we're here in the Caribbean, we're going to be a lot, in a lot better position to survive if there is ever a war or a food shortage because what they have described a lot of the U.S. towns and cities as are food deserts. Mm -hmm. Lots of people living here, lots of dwelling places, but no access to food and to be able to get food you have to drive 14 to 20 miles to get to a supermarket if there is a fuel crisis and a food shortage you're going to now have to be choosing between okay what do i do should i use my money for gas to drive to get the food or do i save the money it, it's going to be crazy so my advice to everybody is to start getting your planters filling it with soil and start putting in your leafy greens your spinach if you're in jamaica plant your callaloo callaloo once you establish a callaloo bed it never it never stops producing for you yeah um get your leafy greens going there's another thing called sprouting where you can get your potted You're on mute. You're muted, yeah. Oh, I'm forgetting the name of the seed that sprouts very well. And by the time it's about two inches tall or three inches tall, you cut it and you make a salad with those sprouts. Put okay. a little salad dressing on that and that's a chock full of potassium, sodium, iron zinc and all the minerals that our body truly needs especially the nerves the nerves need to be nourished the biggest nerve needs to be nourished by vegetables that are rich in certain minerals and vitamins right um one of the things that all of us know about is sour soft leaf so sour soft leaf is another powerful nourisher of the nerves yeah so we need to be having herbs that soothe the central nervous system sauce up is the most common one but there are a couple of others um passion flower is one of them these are some foreign ones but you can get the dried versions in um in store and um chamomile is another one that you can take and these help to nourish the vagus nerve so you're drinking teas that nourish the vagus nerve st john's wort is another herb that relaxes the body and the reason why it relaxes the body is because it nourishes and relaxes the nerves the central nervous system another thing that i um i want to share with everyone in terms of nourishing the central nervous system 
is uh, breath work. Now, think about when you're angry, how you breathe. <sighs> you're vexed. You, you blow like a bull, right? So our day-to-day -day life has us so moving so fast that we take shallow breaths. And when we take shallow breaths, the vagus nerve does not benefit. So the trick is to take deep, long, intentional breaths, especially in the morning. <laughs> so if you can wake up in the morning and come outside in the fresh morning air and just take 10 deep breaths, breathing in through the nose, and out through the mouth. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Ten nice breaths like that also help to nourish the vagus nerves. Yeah? So we encourage everyone to come outside and take some nice, long, deep breaths every morning and also in the evening. In, in fact, in fact, we used to have a, an inspiration section. Yes. And it was all about taking deep breaths. Yes. We had a, an associate who usually send that to us every morning. Oh, absolutely. And that is powerful. Mm -hmm. Very yes. powerful. Yes, it is. So, Paula, um, mm -hmm. so what about like alternative nose blowing? Okay. Well, all right. So, Breath work is a whole nother conversation. And in fact, I have someone who I'm going to introduce you to who can go. And she's from India, born in Africa, okay. lives in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll wow. talk to her and ask her to come and talk about breath work. But breath work, mm -hmm. when you do the alternative breathing like that, what happens is that you have the left and the right hemisphere of the brain. And so when you do the alternate breathing, what you're doing is you are engaging the right and left hemisphere of the brain. So what happens is that when you do that kind of breathing in the morning, you actually uh, encourage clearer, clearer thinking and cognition because you're, you're connecting the left and right hemisphere um, through the alternate nostrils very very important and it's something i do when i'm stuck if i have a problem and i'm stuck i just do some alternate breathing nose breathing and immediately it's like i switched on a a, 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 a switch and my I, it, things start to fire in terms of the cognition so it's very very important and of course when the left brain and the right brain work better together you can imagine that vagus nerve is also strengthened. So all kinds of breathing, all types of breathing stimulate and nourish the vagus nerve. So that's a very good point. And thank you for bringing that up, Courtney. Now, another thing that I want to bring up is there are some points on the body that connect directly the brain and the vagus nerve and this is based off of ayurvedic and traditional chinese medicine right the nail bed of the thumb is connected to the vagus nerve and so by just pressing it for a few seconds you literally can reset your vagus nerve and calm your entire nervous system down. So this is something that you can do just before bed to calm. So this will drop your heart rate and this will also um, calm down the vagus nerve, yeah? Just doing this, holding it, pressing it like that repeatedly is good. The other thing you can do is hold, the two sides of the thumb and press as well. Press it a couple of times. Yeah? Any press thumb it. or both of them? Anyone? You can do, you can, I would do both thumbs. So you do one thumb first, pressing mm -hmm. the nail bed like that. And then after, 
you do, you you hold the two sides of the thumb and you press as well and that is basically like literally giving your vagus nerve a massage yeah okay a lot of people don't know that but these are the tools that we have available to us we don't need to be medicated when we are having symptoms that are related to mental mental illness sometimes it's just a case of needing to just do all of these things every day to stimulate the vagus nerve to calm down the vagus nerve so that it sends good messages to the organs eat properly detox occasionally right and the best way of detoxing of course naturally is what our grandparents used to do they would occasionally take herbs that are good to detox the liver a little bitter wood you remember when you were you were growing up every little thing that happened to you your family give you some bitter wood if you're in the country <laughs> and the bitter wood is also so it stimulates the liver but it also is an antiparasitic and sometimes a lot of the problems that we are having in our body are related to parasites, parasite infestation. And once the body is rid of those parasites, our temperament becomes different. Yeah? I mean, in the Bible, they were talking about the swines and how they would cast out the demons into the swines. To tell you something, when you have parasites in your body in high levels, then your behavior is different and it's almost as if you are possessed with demons. Yeah? If you think about what mental illness is, most mental illness, your behavior becomes as if you are possessed by demons. It's really just parasites some of the time. So just detoxing the lungs, detoxing the liver, detoxing the kidney, the digestive system, the, the, Colon. I haven't even started to talk about the colon. We're going to talk about that soon. The lymphatic, lymphatic system and cleansing the blood makes your body just function better. And your nervous system is also going to function a little better. So it's, a, it's kind of like which comes first, the chicken or the, or the egg. When the organs are inflamed and toxic, the central nervous system, the vagus nerve, literally becomes like Oh yeah, muted. Oh, yeah, muted. Yeah, muted. Pardon? Okay. No, you're yeah. back now. You're back now. Yeah, back. Okay. It seems as if someone is trying to call me. So when the body is toxic, the scent, the, the vagus nerve has to do so much more to bring it back into equilibrium. So we have to assist it. So this is why not there's no system in the body. That's a standalone. They're all interrelated. Yeah? The mind, the body, the spirit. The central nervous system, the vagus nerve, is related to how your organs will function and also how the mind is going to function. Right? If your body so, is very acidic, so, you're so, going to so behave what, differently. So, in other words, what you can say that. The vagus nerve is a linchpin between body and mind, eh? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Another point that I'd like to make, because I didn't touch on the colon at all. When your digestion is complete, the nutrients are absorbed, most of it, in the colon. So if the colon is dirty and impacted and compacted, you can't absorb very much. Yeah, if you don't drink enough water, your brain is going to be starved of water. One of the things that they also know is that water that the brain uses comes directly from the colon. So, what happens when your colon is dirty? You're gonna have dirty water going up into the brain, and the brain is the source 
of the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve going to be slightly operating at less than optimal. You see that? Yes, I, I got a connection, yes. Yeah, and you can also see how diet is going to interfere with brain function. Yeah? Oxygen levels will, will impede brain function as well. So if you breathe, if you do the deep breathing and make that a habit, you're going to optimize your brain function and you're also going to be optimizing vagus nerve function. Yeah? So they're all connected. Every single thing is connected. We can't just pick out one and say, well, you know, I need to work on this. And when I work on this, everything is going to be okay. You no, know, you need to be working on everything all the time. And really keeping the body in balance. In balance in every way. You need to also be moving. Because it's no point sitting here soothing the, the, the central nervous system and the vagus nerve and breathing and so on and your lymphatic system is stagnant and your blood system is not having the toxins carried away or the waste material carried away through sweating, right? So they all work together. We all have a duty to eat well, sleep well, breathe well, nourish ourselves well, and also give ourselves adequate exercise. Okay, yeah. we have the final, we have about we have about two minutes to close. Right, the final big one in terms of nourishing the vagus nerve is this one: when you put both hands together and the fingers touch and the palm of the hands touch, you bring it right here in front of your chest. You automatically nourish the vagus system, vagus okay. nerve. This is a big one. So you understand when we, and this is universal, any group, every civilization, they all did this. And the reason why we do it is that we stop and we connect with our inner man and with the divine when we do this. So this is a powerful thing. And a lot of people don't know that the reason why we do this is to soothe and nourish our vagus nerve. Did you expect that one? No, no, no not at all. But it makes sense, eh? Oh, yes. A whole lot of sense. Oh, if yes. you think about it, when we are in worship, after we have sung and we have been still, meditation is also a big way to nourish the central nervous system. So we meditate and we sing and then we pray. And when we pray, we put our arms together like this. And we slow down our heart rate. We slow down the brain waves. And we are able to connect with the divine within and the divine without. And that is one of the most powerful ways of nourishing the vagus nerve. Prayer, meditation, and connecting with the divine. Thank and you very much. And beautiful you way much. to end. <laughs> yes, wonderful, wonderful way to end. You know, as we end, as we end part one. Yes. I mean, this was riveting. I mean, yes. this was wonderful. Yes. And we thank you, thank Courtney. You very much. Yes, I just want to thank you again, Paula, um, for just giving us that little synopsis on the vagus nerve. And surely, you know, you know, it's very interesting topic. And we see how it affects everything, all the systems of the body. So, um, what we, you know, what we'd like you to do just before we leave is just to give us a, a preview of what you're going to speak on next. <laughs> well, I, I, 
I want to speak on something that I find to be very interesting. I made a correlation or a connection between the depression and anxiety that a lot of people are experiencing and something that people are talking about, but not it's not in mainstream. It's really just a select group of people who are talking about something called the awakening, the awakening of humanity. Yeah? And there okay. is a direct correlation between all of the anxiety and depression that we're seeing and the fact that humanity is awakening. So in other words, the depression and the anxiety is a sign that you are awakening. Because what has happened is that you are suddenly just not satisfied with what's going on in your life and you're actually starting to introspect and ask yourself questions. There is a reason why that is happening and we'll talk about that reason in our next. So think about the vagus nerve now and the fact that it's in your body and and all the things that you can do to stimulate it. There is something else that is stimulating everybody simultaneously on the planet. And that's what we'll discuss in our next um, session. It has to do with our DNA being activated. But by what? Okay? Okay. Thank you very much, Paula. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank yes. you so much for having me. And, and thank you, gentlemen, for the work that you are doing, bringing unusual topics to the public domain for, for people to just think about and question themselves about. It's a little different than what mainstream is bringing. You're bringing things that make people ask questions and that is so very important. So thank you for the work you do. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And as we close off today, we'll ask Queen Labafu to give us the Our Father in the Garfuna language and Tafina to take us out. Until next time, from the Real Stuff Podcast. You lead us to fly. You be lamp all the way I was. I do go along. Never go through. Lead us to Lead us to fly. Lead us to Lead us to well, unfortunately, this is it. Till next time. Bless. Forget what I was trying to say I no longer do what I was gonna do But you're no good for me That's why men will send me a fig of flea Me a fig take away me say Me a fig take away me say Me a fig eye like a thief in the night Me a fig get all the sight